All right. Well, um, finally, I'm, I'm able to do my presentation. I'm so sorry about that. Um, well, uh, I'm Kei Tokunaga. Um, I'm an engineering manager at Fujitsu. Um, I'll do this presentation for someone else, actually. Uh, his name is Vin. Uh, he was supposed to do this presentation, but uh, he couldn't make it due to a um, visa problem, unfortunately. So uh, if you have any questions, please ask him via email or in the IRC. And I'm, I'm so sorry for the inconvenience. And this is a uh, beginner uh, level overview. So it's going to be short presentation. Okay, and then also, Hio is an engineer from OpenStack, a user community in Vietnam. And I also want to give him a uh, credit for doing a lot of testing on OS Profiler. Okay, so first of all, I'll talk about what OS Profiler is. Uh, the purpose of OS Profiler is to provide a tracing functionality for both operators and developers. And here are just some examples of use case for operators. OS Profiler records data for troubleshooting or root cause analysis. Uh, logs are helpful when a problem occurs, but it's not usually sufficient to identify the root cause because you don't know what happened until the problem occurred. OS Profiler records such data. To record such data, OS Profiler needs to always be enabled. So OS Profiler is developed as very uh, lightweight tracing. For developers, OS Profiler records data for identifying a performance bottleneck or dependency between services and so on. Those kind of information are useful during development of OpenStack. And I'll talk about more details later. And most important inf information that OS Profiler provides are calling relation between services, functions, and the duration that service and the function takes to handle a request. They are useful information for the purpose I just explained. And this figure uh, is just one example of standard output of OS Profiler. Uh, you can see how a request is handled in multiple services. In this case, OpenStack took 524 uh, milliseconds to handle the request in total. Keystone first received the request and passed it to Glance. Glance called Keystone again and did some database accesses. That took 322 milliseconds and they returned to Keystone. Uh, you can filter to get only necessary data using regular expression uh, in the box as well. Okay, now I'd like to talk about uh, mechanism a little bit. Uh, basically, functions of services have trace points at the beginning and the end of the functions, like, like the blue box in the, in the figure. And in this example, a request comes into service A, and it calls function B of service V, and then function C of service C. When the request passes the trace point, it calls notifier that is defined in OS provider source code. And what Notifier does is to store data like timestamp, the name of service that calls Notifier, and so on, to the trace database. You can specify either Redis, MongoDB, Elasticsearch, LogInsight, or Jaeger tracing as the trace database. OS Profiler team is working on Jaeger Trace right now. 
which is an open trace compatible tracer that is being developed under Cloud Native Computing Foundation. Uh, Jago will likely be supported as the uh, trace database in Rocky. In development status, as I explained its mechanism, you need to put trace point to uh, each function of each service to enable OS profiler uh, functionality. So engineers, engineers working on OS profiler uh, get into each service development community or project to enable OS profiler uh, one by one. Today, most of the core function services are already uh, covered, and then also most of other services are covered like shown in the table. Now, um, I'll explain how you can use OS profiler but today, only basic stuff. Okay, so uh, let's build an environment using DevStack uh, to use OS Profiler. If you are an op operator who already has a production environment that enables OS Profiler, then you can skip this part. Uh, first of all, uh, add the following lines to devstacklocal.conf, two lines and then run dev stack. And uh, you also need set environment values to run OpenStack CLI. And then uh, check the value of uh, some pre-configured options in one service config file, either Nova, Glance, Neutron, whatever you like. And uh, you'll use the value of a connection string and eight Mac keys later when you execute OS profiler commands. Uh, with the current, current, uh, current version of OS profiler, you need to explicitly specify that you want OS profiler to read data with OS profiler option every time when you execute an OpenStack command. To retrieve the data, uh, you can use OS profiler uh, command with a trace show option that outputs all the data in HTML format. So you might want to direct the output to a file with out option. You can also output the data in JSON format if you like. Now let's take a look at the result of OS Profiler in more detail. From the result, uh, you can see Glance took 474 milliseconds and suspect, you probably suspect Glance could be a bottleneck of this process. Let's click the details button. Now you can see more details. Um, and you can see Glance executed get v2 slash images. And let's click the pl uh, plus button uh, uh, to see what Glance actually did. Now you can see Glance just called Keystone and Keystone was the one who took most of time there. The time of database access by Glance was almost uh, negligible. Uh, with this interface, you can see uh, not only API calling relations, but you can also see traces of database operations. So let's click the duration of database to see more details about uh, database access. Um, you can even see the contents of SQL. So again, uh, with OS Profiler, uh, you can obtain useful information to identify the root cause of the problem or performance bottleneck and so on. If you are a developer, you might want to add more trace points to the source code for debugging. 
There are some ways to do it, well, actually five ways to do it. Here, I'll explain uh, two ways. The first one is to put profiler.start and profiler.stop to the place where you want. OS profiler will uh, record specified data at two points and measure the time between start and stop. The second one is to just to put profiler trace definition at the beginning. That will automatically uh, add start and stop function at the beginning and the end of the target function. You can find more information in the link I put at the, at the bottom of the, of the slide. Um, development in the future. Uh, now we're working on adding more backends to the trace database, such as Zipkin and the Lightstep and so on. And we are also working on some enhancements. The first one, continuous tracing. Like I explained, you, you need to ex explicitly specify that you want OS profiler to record data every time when you execute an OpenStack command. But with this continuous race, uh, tracing feature, you don't have to do that anymore. <coughs> and the mutable configuration, today, um, if you change the configuration in OpenStack services, you need to restart the OpenStack services. But with this mutable configuration feature, you don't have to do that anymore either. In sampling, to reduce overhead, uh, we are trying to introduce a sampling concept so OS profiler won't take all data every time a request goes through uh, trace points, but instead, OS provider takes da uh, data with the policy you specified. There are three policies today. Uh, probability, if you set probability to 0 0.01, OS profiler just records 1% of all traces to, to the trace database. That will reduce a lot of performance overhead. And rate it. If you set rate it to uh, 1,000, OS profiler takes 1,000 traces per minute, at most, to the trace database. If the number of traces ex ex uh, exceeds uh, 1,000, OS profiler skips the rest of traces. Adaptive. Adaptive is a hybrid way. In the actual system, uh, we have peak workloads and the low workloads like almost idle. Uh, let's say uh, we set the probability to 0.01. OS profiler may record too much trace in peak times and too little in low workload time. So adaptive address uh, the issue. Okay, so um, actually uh, my presentation is uh, all, but um, again, for the uh, people who came in, to, in, the, in the middle of my session, I did this presentation for someone else, and he was supposed to do this, but couldn't. So if you have any questions, um, uh, ask him, or you can talk to me so I can give you his email address or something. So I'm, I'm, again, I'm sorry for the inconvenience. Thank you very much. <laughs>